Welcome to the seventh lesson of the Ultimate Songwriting Guide. Now, we hope you're ready to finalize the chords in your chorus. Step 7. Create the chorus. To begin, let's brainstorm a few things. To add variety and to make your song more engaging, consider using a new chord progression for the chorus section, as opposed to repeating the verse. For obvious reasons, your song will sound less repetitive if you have a chorus that contrasts with the verse. So come up with something new and different, to add more dynamics to your song. First, let's review the verse of the dog song, which goes from, the 1 chord, in the key of C major, to the 5, 6, and 4 chord. The progression is repeated twice and the verse lasts for 8 bars. Okay, now, there are many ways to choose chords for your chorus, but for the dog song example, we chose new chords that also belong to the C major scale. We kept it pretty simple, considering we are staying in C major. There will be a slight contrast between the parts, but to some, it might not even be recognizably different, with everything else that will be going on in your song. So just be aware of this, and make a decision to set the intentions of your own song. As you just saw, the new dog song chorus we came up with, also starts with the one chord, just like the verse, but will be followed by the three, 4, and 5 chord. In the key of C, this gives it a 1, 3, 4, 5 progression, which lasts for 8 bars, just like the verse. Okay, now it's your turn to choose a chord progression for the chorus in your song. Here are some tips to help you choose the right chords. Tip number 1. Familiarize yourself with the diatonic chords in C major. These chords are formed using only the notes from the C major scale. Try to find 4 chords out of these 7, that sound good together. Jam around with these diatonic chords in C major. And have fun! Ok, tip number 2. Introduce a new secondary dominant chord, from outside of the key you are rooted in. Here, let me explain. First thing is first. A dominant chord is always the 5th chord in a diatonic key, built on the 5th scale degree. It's a major triad with a minor 7th, also called a dominant 7th chord. The dominant chord has a strong tendency to resolve to the tonic chord, the 1 chord, because of the tension created by the tritone interval between the 3rd and 7th of the dominant chord. Now, let's examine the 1, 5, 6, 4 chord progression from the first verse of the dog song again, to come up with a new chorus idea, just for you. To introduce a new secondary dominant chord into this chord progression, we can introduce a chord that will act as a dominant chord, for one of the diatonic chords in the progression, other than the root note, C major. To demonstrate the use of a secondary dominant chord, we simply pick any chord, in our chord progression, except for the one chord, as mentioned. In this case, we are choosing to replace the G major, 5 chord, with a new secondary dominant chord of A minor. What matters is, in this case we are resolving to the A minor, so we would need to find the secondary dominant chord of A minor, which just so happens to be the E7 chord. After replacing the G chord, with E7, the E7 chord acts as the secondary dominant that resolves to the A minor, the 6 chord, in C major, adding harmonic interest and a smooth resolution. It's all about the note you are resolving to. In this case, A minor. Now, the E7 chord is not diatonic to C major, but it can definitely be used as a secondary dominant chord of A minor. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Just remember the 5 chord always leads nicely to the 1 chord, or the root note. So, decide which note you are leading to, find the dominant chord of that note, and see how it sounds. Okay, tip number 3. Experiment with chord inversions. I can't stress this enough. Inverting chords can create smoother voice leading, and give your progression a more sophisticated sound. And, by rearranging the notes in a chord, so that the root is no longer the lowest note, you create inversions that can help you make nicer transitions between chords or emphasize different harmonies. You might even start sounding a little jazzy. Here are three examples, of how you can incorporate chord inversions, into a chorus, based on the verse of the dog song, that goes like this. C major, G major, A minor, and F major. In this example, we will introduce new inversions for all four chords, so for example, C major, second inversion, G, C, and E. G major, first inversion, B, 
D, and G. A minor, second inversion, E, A, and C. F major, first inversion, A, C, and F. Okay, now go ahead and try some inversions for yourself. Unless you're more of an advanced player, you will most likely need to brush up on your inversion chord shapes in order to practice this. Tip number five, try modal interchange or borrowed chords. These are chords borrowed from the parallel minor key of the key you are already in. So in the case of the dog song, when we wrote it, we only pulled notes from the C major chords on the left. If we needed more options to choose from, we could have picked any of the seven chords from the parallel C minor chords column on the right. For example, let's choose the B flat major chord. This is just one of the seven borrowed chords we can choose from here. Listen to how the B flat major adds color and contrast to your C major rooted chord progression. Simply substitute any of the chords in your C major chord progression, except for the root note with B flat major. See if you can find a good place to fit it in with your chorus. And finally, tip number six, don't be afraid to break the rules. While these tips can definitely help you find a good chord progression, feel free to experiment and let your creativity run wild. Sometimes, the most unconventional chord progressions can lead to unique and memorable song ideas. The four chords you choose here will be repeated twice during the entire eight bars of your chorus, so choose wisely. Remember, practice going back and forth between the chords in your verse and the chords in your chorus to make sure it all flows nicely. Repeat this over and over until you are comfortable. Practice makes perfect. Warm up your vocals as you start to find the right chords too. Oh, and one very important last thing. The simple dog song example we have been referencing is structured using a very basic song pattern that millions of songs also use. I'd like to share it with you before we start on the bridge. It goes like this. Verse one, A section, chorus one, B section, verse two, A section, chorus two, B section, bridge one, C section, and finally, chorus three, B section. This simple song structure is referred to as A, B, A, B, C, B. Think of it as a very basic format that can be customized in many different ways. Now, start jotting down your ideas for the chords in your own chorus and use the boxes on the poster to help map it out. Remember, the chord progression is just one aspect of your song. Be sure to consider the melody, lyrics, rhythm, and overall structure when composing your new hit song. Congratulations on completing step seven of 16. Next, we'll guide you through the many options in creating a chord progression for your bridge, and soon you will be able to practice playing all of the parts in your song together over and over until it sounds great. Let's continue on to the next lesson. Click through to video lesson, step eight, now.